Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to look at making a 468 index. This is what it looks like as a section with four sides, a section with six sides, and a section with eight sides. Now I'm sure most of you watching this uh, know how these are used. Uh, this is for material up to one inch. Uh, but if you're not familiar with how they're used, please stick around to the end of the video because I'll do a short demonstration uh, at the end of this video. As I said, this is for a material up to one inch in diameter. This is simply a setup jig now. This uh, will be used to set up and then index and then index again for ever how many sides that you're going to be doing. Now I fully understand that you can use uh, 5C collet blocks uh, to make a six-sided or four-sided, but remember a 5C collet, the largest material that will pass through the collet, collet is one inch. You can get uh, uh, 5C collets up to uh, inch and an eighth but they will not pass through it. Uh, plus you're limited to four sides or six sides. In this video, we'll make a four, six, eight, uh, but we're gonna make it for up to two inch pipe or two inch diameter round material. <clears throat> now I've already got the octagon laid out on this piece, but I'm gonna bring the camera in to the paper and I'm gonna show you how to lay out an octagon on a, uh, on a piece of square stock. And we're going to do this on manual mill with a, the part of the vise that when you got your mill and your mill vise, you probably put that piece up and haven't really found a lot of use for it. Let me swing the camera around to the mill and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you're like me, when you got your mill and your mill vise, First thing you did was take this plate off and put it away. Uh, you may have used it some, uh, but for the most part, uh, well, for one thing, they rob about an inch and a half of, of height. They take a little bit of the rigidity out of your setup, and they're just not needed that often. But we're going to use it today, and that's all we're going to use to get our various sides on our octagon and our hexagon. So I'm going to set the camera up over here on the paper uh, so to show you how to lay out an octagon on a square workpiece. All right, over here on my notepad, I've laid out a, a square. Uh, in this case, it's four inches. And I've also found the center here. But instead of going diagonal to find the center, I laid out center, center lines on both the X and Y axis. Uh, those are not needed for the octagon but will come in useful uh, when we lay out the hexagon on the material. But we'll use this center point and we'll set our compass to the length from the center point to one corner. Now go to that corner, put you an intersect line in each of the two directions. Do that from each corner. I think you'll see where I'm going here. Now those intersect lines that you just created, we want to join each one of those. I'm going to slide out of the camera view for just a second here where I can get to this. Alright, so now we have our eight-sided octagon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want you to understand that these lines, uh, I'm going to mill to those lines, but it's not all that critical if I come up short on a milling or mill a little beyond the line. What is important about this whole index jig is that the angles, in this case the octagon, is that each angle, each side is at 45 degrees to its adjacent sides. Now I've done the same thing 
on my piece of material. I'm going to set this up in the mill now. And what we'll be milling out, uh, see if I can find a, a colored pen to show you. But what we're going to be milling out this time, what we'll be milling out is the green part. And we're going to be milling it two-thirds the depth of our material. Our material is one inch thick, so we're going to do it. I don't like the number 666, so I'm going to come down to 660 thousandths for this first mill around here. So let me get set up on the mill, and we'll be right back. I've got the workpiece set up in the mill vise now, and i got the camera up kind of high now, so hopefully you can see uh, what I am doing. Uh, the hexagon lines, octagon lines are here. This is set up on zero degrees right now on the protractor that's on the vise. So I'm going to loosen that and swing it to 45 degrees. Now, these, these lines on here, again, can serve as a sanity check that we are set up on 45 degrees down here because they should line up now with the y-axis. I've already found center and got my z-axis DRO here set to zero. So we're going to come off the edge. Now we're going to come down 660 thousandths. And once we get that set, we shouldn't have to move that again during this entire operation. The end mill you want to select for this is one that's obviously sharp. You'll be uh, cutting on the sides, so you want something that's got good sharp flutes on it. And you'll also want one that's got cutting flutes long enough to reach this 660. As you see, I got it set, setting up on parallels so I don't run into my vise. All right, so what I'm going to do is touch this off. And I'm going to be conventional milling all the time. And I'm not taking a whole lot at the time. I'm taking a, a hundred thousandths per cut. And of course, milling aluminum, you want to keep a close eye on your, on your mill that it doesn't clog up. If it starts to clog up, a little bit of WD-40 will work wonders on it. All right, we're getting close to the line now, so I'm not. I'm just going to take a little bit at a time. In this case, I think I can take my full hundred thousandths. All right, that's going right down our line. All right, before I move to the other side. Let me point out just a couple things here. Number one, when you're when you're milling here, you want to mill as close to the line as you can. But again, and I'll probably say this a dozen times in this video, how much we come in or don't come in is really not relevant. What is relevant is that we've set our protractor, we've set our dial on the protractor correctly, and we've got 45 degrees between this angle and this side, so same thing between this one and this one. Each of the angles all the way around are 45 degrees. Now when you set up on the mill and you start milling to that line, it should be close, but don't get concerned if it's, if there's a little bit of the line left down here and not so much of the line left down here. 
remember, these were drawn, these guidelines were simply drawn uh, with a, a scribe and a straight edge. And laying out the points on those, I was having to hold the point of the protractor on the corner to mark that and that. So they may not be exactly in line. They are just simply guide marks to get you close. All right? Remember, what's important is the angle between each of the sides. So let's leave our... We'll leave our depth set just like it was, like it is on the mill. We'll come over here to the other side. All right, we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to touch off, and then I'm going to uh, move half a turn on my on my uh, table on the x-axis. Whatever works for you. That again, we've taken some of the rigidity uh, out of the vise by putting this uh, uh, swivel mount back under the bottom. Whatever works for you and the end mill you got is how much of a bite you want to take. I'm going to back the camera out just a little bit now uh, because I want you to see that what I'm doing, the y-axis is unlocked, but as I move the x-axis in, I'll relock it each time. As you can probably see, I got my shower curtain back over here, and I do that. My, my desk space is right on the other side of this curtain here, and this type of side milling like this produces tens of thousands of these little needle uh, shaped chips that get into everything if you're not careful. So I'm going to start now, touch off, and then just move in a little bit at a time to get close to, uh, or get on this line as close as possible. Advance my x axis, lock the table down, unlock, advance, lock. Rinse and repeat. Actually, I did a climb mill in. I didn't intend to. Just got out of sequence. My coffee's getting cold. That's two of the four sides we've got to mill. Remember, on this square piece we started with, four, our, four of our octagon sides were already there. So we've, we're halfway on milling the octagon. And what I'm going to do while we're sitting right here, remember, octagon, everything is 45 degrees to everything, to everything else. You know what, I'm going to come back and get just a little closer to that line right there. Just a few more thousands to satisfy the OCD in me. Now, as I was saying, we swung this around 45 degrees here, so we should be able to mill on our y-axis now and get the opposing sides. In this case, I'll be able to use the power feed. So we'll come in a little bit on our x-axis. I'm sorry, on the y-axis. Unlock the Y, go in a little more. And 
and repeat the process. Unlock the Y, advance, power feed in the correct direction. Now we've got one more to go, and that's this front point right up here. And I hope I got enough room to move my mill back. I didn't check that. All right, I've run into a little issue here. But it's nothing that's not insurmountable by any means. In this case, I just don't have enough wire travel with all this vice sticking out back here to. Uh, to get this front edge. So all I'm going to do, or all I've got to do, is swing the vise to 45 degrees in the other direction. At least I got to use my power feed on one side. Alright, I'm going to have to get in front of the camera to get around here to, to see the 45 degrees over here. I think if I were to use this uh, swivel vise, swivel on vise much more, I'd put me an indicator over here on this side as well so I didn't have to look over there. Be sure we're going to be able to clear now. This is the first 4 inch one I've made. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay. So we started with four sides already on our octagon and we have milled the other four sides. Happy with that? Tens of thousands of chips, hundreds of thousands. All right, I'm going to take it out now and go back to the workbench to lay out the hexagon. And yes, it's perfectly fine to take it back out of the uh, uh, vice because we're done with the octagon now. What I'm going to do while I'm sitting right here is pull the vice back to zero. The only reason I'm doing that is to have a starting point that I'll remember when we start with the hexagon. Other thing I'm going to do, get this up where you can see what I'm doing. The end mill down here is at 660 thousandths deep right now. For the second layer, I want it only 330. So I want to go ahead and move that before I forget it. Again, that's locked down and be in position. So let's turn back to the workbench now. Well, folks, as much as I hate to do it, I'm going to have to break this video down into two parts. Uh, there's just simply too much content uh, to get it in into one video. But I encourage you to please come back for the second part. The piece turned out excellent. I'm extremely pleased with how it turns out turned out. And also pleased with how well it worked. 
in the second part we'll finish up the hexagon uh, and do the demo of turning this octagon on a piece of inch and a half stock. Take care. See you soon. Mm -hmm.